Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Kingdom Hearts video. Today, I'm not coming at you with a theory. I'm coming at you with some Melody of Memory news hot off the press. So IGN and PlayStation Blog released some interviews from Tetsuya Nomura and the rest of the Melody of Memory development crew just about the game to answer some questions about what we can expect, what the gameplay is going to be like, different modes. And I just wanted to share that with y'all as soon as I could. So with that being said, let's get into it. And if you want to see more Kingdom Hearts news videos and speculation, make sure you subscribe to the channel support your boy and hit that notification button so it looks like we're getting some of the news some of the sort of modes that we'll have in this game so i wanted to go through those with y'all it looks like the first one we'll be getting is a thing called mode mixer and this is from the ign interview that released today as well mode mixer it reads unlike the core kingdom hearts games melody of memory is not an rpg the musical genre has meant Square Enix has found new approaches to telling stories in the Kingdom Hearts world through a variety of modes. For those in love with the fiction, World Tour mode will be there at the first port of call, as effectively it is the story campaign. Select music is a mode similar but allows you to revisit single tracks that you've previously unlocked. And then there's Memory Dive, in which you can play with some of the cutscenes and movies from past series and include those in the rhythm section, says Suzui. The mode is even inspired by cutscenes from the RPG games themselves in which characters dive into memories. So I think that's really cool. You sort of have the story campaign, which I assume World Tour mode is going to be where the story stuff is as far as Kyrie and the quote Master of Masters is. Music mode allows you to revisit single tracks, which also I think is really cool because I already know I'm going to spend a lot of time on Vector to the Heavens, Dearly Beloved for Kingdom Hearts 3, if it's in there, and Shion's theme as well. And then Memory Dive. I also think Memory Dive is great because if you want to sort of go back through the Kingdom Hearts series and, you know, see where we've been, I think Memory Dive is also going to be really fun to work through as well. So I think that's pretty cool. And then he goes on to say the Versus mode, meanwhile, has a few more complexities. The 1v1 mode, which uses tracks that have been unlocked in World Tour mode, is played online or locally against the AI. Rounds begin with each player choosing a preference of track and then the game randomly selects which one will be played. Then it's a race to the best score, with your opponent's score displayed on your HUD to encourage and or upset you. That's hilarious by the way, but continuing on. During rounds, you'll be able to make use of tricks. There are 10 different types of tricks, Suzui says. At the beginning of tracks, you'll only be able to use one trick, but towards the end, you'll be able to use two simultaneously. That makes it even more tricky and more complicated about how you can build these together. Winning a versus match will bag you two collectible cards, and in a move that feels very evocative of Kingdom Hearts kindly values, losers are more like runner-ups as they get a card too. So I think that's really cool. I think it's really funny that you can mess up someone because I'm trying to run someone's rhythm, but I'm honestly excited for this game and I'm excited to just play with my friends and maybe introduce some people to the Kingdom Hearts series. But it also looks like that PlayStation Blog released an interview with some of the developers of the game. So let's also dive into that as well. So just a question to start us off. It's a pretty simple one. The interviewer asked, is it possible to change the Keyblade? And Suzui answered, we do not change the Keyblade, but there is a collection element that collects the cards of successive Keyblades. So I think that's pretty interesting just because, you know, I was hoping we get to see, you know, Sora with the Ultima or Sora with Oathkeeper and Oblivion, but it looks like we are just going to see the Kingdom Key. And it makes me wonder how, especially Roxas, I wonder how his Keyblades are going to, uh, are going to play out. Is he going to have Oathkeeper and Oblivion? Is he just going to have the Kingdom Key like he did in sort of the beginning of days? And will Axel have his Keyblade? You know, I wonder how that's going to work out as well. So the interviewer asks, how will Disney characters appear in the game? So Zui answers, appear as a guest member. For example, when playing Under the Sea, it feels that either the left or the right side other than the leader becomes Ariel. When you play this stage for the first time in World Trip, guest characters will participate, but after that you will participate once in several times. If you want to play the usual to aim for a high score, you can play without the guest characters. When a guest joins, a friend symbol appears in place of the enemy and a special sound is played. You can also use the items to join the king and play together. So I guess that's pretty interesting, just I know there is an achievement that says you have to play with Mickey for about an hour, so I guess that that's pretty cool. I want to talk about also the difficulty in the stages in this, though, in this next question. It seems that there are three music score difficulty levels, beginner, standard, and proud. Is there a difficulty level above that? Now this question I like because I've been wondering since we got the first couple of trailers, is there going to be the Kingdom Hearts equivalent of all night for you Persona 5 dancing nerds out there? 
and Suzui answers, for those who like rhythm action, we prepared something that was rewarding because of Mr. Nomura's idea. However, instead of the highest difficulty level like Critical in Kingdom Hearts, we added performer style to the playstyle. This style uses L2 and R2 buttons and side pads, making the button input more complicated. Performer style has been added to all difficulty levels for beginners, standards, and prouds so that you can play the Gutsuri. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Critical is a special name, so I chose a different name this time. So that's actually interesting because I was wondering if we were going to get some sort of critical mode in this game just for the sort of expert rhythm game people. And it's interesting because I played Persona 5 Dancing recently and that mode is called All Night and it was really fun but it was also really complicated. I was wondering if King Hearts was going to have this. And it looks like we we're going to have it called Performer Style which is a nice little name. It has a nice ring to it. Alright, now we are getting into the juicy stuff. It looks like we're going to talk about Kyrie's memory, and the interviewer asks, If you look at the trailer when the title was announced, it seems that a story about Kyrie will be developed in this work. How will the new story get caught in the game? And Nomura answers, At this point, I cannot tell you where the story will go. However, the volume of the story is not so large. There is always a story in the Kingdom Hearts series, and I wanted to make it a story like an omnibus, so I wrote a new story. I wanted this rhythm action to have a story like meaning. If you think that this is an ordinary rhythm action game and play it, there will be a story connection. So that's cool. And I like that he said, you know, the volume of the story is not so large, meaning we can't expect a whole lot of story stuff, which is honestly what I expected. I was not expecting anything too large, like a mainline Kingdom Hearts game or even like a Birth by Sleeper Days game, but sort of just hints towards the next part of the franchise, which I think is pretty cool. And I'm glad he really, I'm glad he cleared that up for us. The interviewer then asks, isn't it going to be that Kyrie's memory, which has never been told, will be revealed when you follow the episodes of the past, like the summary version? And Omari answers, when you play a game, the story is pinched. Unlike the previous series, I hope you will play it and see for yourself. Nomura out here dodging questions left and right. Oh, you love to see it. The interviewer then says, the series fans seems to expect that it will be closely related to the main story. And Nomura says, as planned, and then laughs. Okay, this next question is actually very very juicy. The interviewer says, there was also a person in a black coat on the trailer. From the association Melody of Memory to MOM to Master of Masters, it seems that many people expect him to be the Master of Masters. Nomura says, that was as planned. However, I was very worried about the title, the words Memory and Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories overlap. However, I thought there was nothing else but deciding on this title. At the very least, I use Memory instead of Memories as a resistance. And then Suzui adds in, when translated into Japanese, it means Melody of Memory, but I thought that was a title that describes the overall structure of the game. Nomura, you bastard. So it looks like he wanted us to think that that was the Master of Masters in the title. And when he says, you know, that was as planned, it makes me think that that's not the Master of Masters, which is kind of what I expected. I personally expect it to be either Lushu or someone like Xehanort or something like that, but uh... Yeah, no, I had a feeling he would not be the Master of Masters. And I like that he actually made that connection. That is, Nomura is actually kind of hilarious. So it looks like that's all for the story stuff today, but I just want to get into the last sort of bits of this interview because I think this, this stuff is kind of interesting as well. The interviewer asks, please tell us about the future outlook for the Kingdom Hearts series. And Nomura answers, since I made a break with Kingdom Hearts 3, I'm wondering if I can do something for a wider audience. It will be great if we can expand our users even further. And that's really cool because I noticed that with Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, specifically the Switch version, expanding to online and sort of multiplayer, I honestly thought that was a great way to sort of bring people in and introduce them to the Kingdom Hearts series. Instead of going through a single player game sort of alone, you can enjoy it with friends and, you know, add like a party game to your repertoire, Switch games or something like that. And then he says, finally, please give a message to the fans who are looking forward to the release. And Ma says, I want many people to know about Kingdom Hearts. This time we increased the number of supported languages and challenged the Arabic version for the first time on PS4. As for the recorded songs, not only songs that fans of the Kingdom Hearts series like, but also Disney songs are available. There is also a mode where you can feel free to play, so I think that even small children can play. I hope that those who are new to the Kingdom Hearts series for the first time will be able to play it once. And that's kind of what I was saying the first time. I like that they're making it more accessible to people who are not just fans of the series. I think it's cool that they are sort of welcoming new people into the series with this game. 
And honestly, I know we expected a sort of, you know, huge game after Kingdom Hearts 3, but I like this direction because it really gives them the opportunity to explore and expand the series to sort of bring people in and introduce them to the new series. And this game, it looks like it's going to be sort of a celebration of the Kingdom Hearts series and Yoko Shimomura's music, which honestly I think is cool because it comes in and it brings people in with a sort of story summary game. But it also gives longtime fans of the series new story stuff so we can get excited for what's going to happen next in the Kingdom Hearts series. So all in all, I'm still excited about the game. I'm still debating on whether or not I want to get it for PS4 or Switch. It's most likely going to be PS4. But in any case, I will leave a link to the articles down below if you want to read the rest of them. I'll leave them in the description. So make sure you leave a like if you like the video. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see from Melody of Memory. And make sure you subscribe to this channel, support your boy, and help the channel grow. My name is Moose Wayne One, and I will see y'all next time.